Look, uh, careful, I, I no, wouldn't do that. Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie, and it's time to talk about the second episode of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. This time the team is brought in to investigate a mysterious power source, and if you thought that sounded a lot like the Avengers Tesseract, then you were right. They end up finding out that it's a Tesseract-powered weapon, like the kind you saw the Red Skull building in the original Captain America movie. They basically have to get it back to S.H.I.E.L.D. headquarters, but they run into the Peruvian army. It turns out the leader of the Peruvian army is actually someone who used to work with Coulson, and who he probably had a little bit too much fun with on the job. Obviously, this being the second episode in a S.H.I.E.L.D. series, you know that they're going to win somehow. It's just a matter of how they're going to solve the problem that they're in. So basically, the team just uses this episode as a Bonnie experience. You basically learn this is their first full mission as a team together because the first mission, technically, was when they were trying to get Sky. So Coulson's storyline in this episode becomes a lot more prominent. He actually gets a lot of nice action, too. Not quite on par with the Avengers butt-kicking that he delivered to Loki, but still pretty good. It's nice to see him. He didn't really do that much in the first episode, but walk around and yell at people. I did like the fact that they addressed Coulson's collector status. He's basically a collector of nostalgic items. So basically the Commandant, played by Lenore, the antagonist of the episode, tells Coulson that he's romanticizing the past, and the episode turns into this cautionary tale about what happens when you romanticize the past too much, because obviously she ends up double-crossing him and trying to plane jack them. The team ends up bonding, coming together, not without a few Ming-Na jokes, which I think is funny, I'll address those later. But basically they get rid of the Peruvians and slingshot the device into the sun. But during the process, there are some new questions raised, obviously, to propel us into the next episode. Mostly being that Sky is still part of Rising Tide and is still in communication with her other Rising Tide people. So it'll be interesting to see how that's going to come back and bite her in the ass. Obviously the red masks we saw in the promo for episode 3 probably have something to do with that. Let's talk about the shipping on this episode because obviously they were kind of playing that up in the premiere between Grant and Sky. So they do have a bit of a moment, but it is cut short by the Peruvians as Grant starts looking around. Obviously they're gonna play that up for comedy, I'm sure. I really like the Ming-Na cavalry jokes. Obviously her character, Melinda May, is still very mysterious to us right now. We obviously know something happened in Bahrain. She obviously went into some berserker rage and killed a ton of people and is now in this kind of Rambo state, like in Rambo 3, where he basically gave up violence and became a pacifist. That's really just reinforced when she gets super upset at Coulson for making her fight. But later in the episode, we actually learned that she's something of a shield legend, and then they call her the Cavalry. Like when you say, call in the Cavalry, in her case, they're basically talking about her as a person. So if you remember in my video for episode one, I talked about her being like the Jane of the team, like the Firefly Jane of the team. I think that's really just hammered home in this episode when you just see her break her wrist. It was really meant as a joke and just to show how badass she was. But let's talk about the biggest moment of the episode. It was not the episode itself, but that little post-credits bit. I feel like in true Marvel fashion, they saved the best for last. Don't run away yet. Make sure you TiVo all the way through the ads. So obviously, if you've seen the episode, you know Samuel Jackson was in in full-on Nick Fury mode. I'll downgrade your ass to a Winnebago, son. Let me know what you think of his appearance. I really thought it was a pretty good use of him. I didn't really expect to see him till later in the series, but obviously since the show is so early in its run and they really want to win over new viewers and existing Marvel fans, they want to use some of their big guns early. Personally, I thought the episode as a whole was actually better than the premiere. There was a lot more action, it was a lot tighter, and obviously I think it's going to get even better once they get over this hump of becoming a team, because obviously there's a lot of infighting and bickering, but what happens when a team really comes together, that's when the real action starts, so that's what I'm really excited to see, but I'm assuming that they're going to spend the next couple of episodes still kind of trying to mesh. But let me know what you think. What were your favorite parts of the episode? Obviously, I'm guessing the Nick Fury cameo was at least one of those things, but obviously the Coulson backstory was a lot of fun, especially seeing him be a bit of a ladies' man and a badass in the episode. So next week, I'll be posting my episode three video. Be sure to subscribe to get it. We're gonna get to see our first supervillain. It's titled The Asset, and the name of The Asset is actually the person that ends up turning to Graviton in the comics. I talk a little bit about it in a preview that I did last week, which you can watch here. And you can click here to watch all my other Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. videos. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys tomorrow. High fives.